They said, if you are unwilling to drive that trailer here, we have no other option than to terminate you if you are unwilling to do your job. And I said, no, no. I said, the last person who drove this, because I'm pretty sure five other drivers did not notice all this mud and grass that I've seen you pictures of. So it's not five other drivers. It's one driver who probably did something really stupid and I reported. But I am reporting it that it is not safe to drive. Okay, driver. So, well, let's start from the beginning. Like, how, how did you find out about the company? How did you become associated with the company? There's um, truck drivers, like Driver Pulse or Indeed or um, other things that you can get onto and, you know, just basically put your stuff out there, what you're qualified for. And I don't know. I I joke around a lot and I don't want to say nothing that's inappropriate. No, you you know, I, I joke a lot. Like, you know, it's pretty much like whoever wants to. You know. Okay, that's not funny. Anywho, so it's basically like Indeed or, you know, Driver Pulse is like specifically for drivers. You know, you put on there your driving history and stuff like that. I don't actually remember which um, website or whatnot that they found me on. I, like, I'd never know that. Um, they just, well, actually, yeah, I do. Because I think it was, maybe it was Driver Pulse that they had sent me. Because Driver Pulse is specifically for drug drivers. So if the company is interested in you, then they will fit in you paperwork or, or not paperwork, but rather you know, documentation, so that way they can run, like, a background check on you and stuff like that, you know, to see what your license is like, if you've got anything on your license, you know, and then if they clear you, then they can go further, you know? So it's a very timely process. Uh, how long have you been driving before they before they reach out to you? Like, how what was your experience so far? Me, nine years. Oh, okay. So, you, so you're a pretty good experienced driver out here. Oh, yeah. Five. I I've been uh, I've been around the block a few times. Okay, okay. So they so y'all came together via driver pulse. I, I believe so. I don't want to say that one hundred percent because there are other uh, websites or whatnot that do authorize the same kind of stuff to happen. But, I mean, driver pulse. Indeed, I don't believe they do that. Okay, but I'm gonna say ninety nine percent. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so let's. Let's go with your experience. You, you're you from where? Texas? Yes, sir. I okay. live in Amarillo, Texas. Okay. so I'm not they, from Texas, but yeah, I've been here long enough. Okay. Okay. Texas. Okay. So you, you were, you're from Texas and via driver pulse, you connected with the company. They brought you up here, orientation. I guess everything went cool in orientation and, and you was able to be funneled through to be one of their drivers. So what was your whole experience all together with the with the overall company? Like like from the time you you got there until the time you made it home. Okay. Um in the beginning it was I will honestly say really not cuz I would get a reset every single week, you know, I would do my 70 hours, I would get a 34 hour reset, um I'd be able to do my laundry, relax. You know, just clean my truck, focus on me, wash some, you know, TV, whatnot. But then it started changing about, like, I would say about two months ago. And then they started really pushing, and saying that, you know, your 10-hour clock is your 10-hour clock. You need, it doesn't matter what load we give you. If you've got extra time to load, it doesn't matter. Cause, and I'm like, okay, well, we're not slaves. Like, you you know, if you if you give us a deadline i mean that's how truck driving used to be back in the day like uh, a dispatcher would give you a load and say hey take it from point a to point b these are the miles and the driver would decide you know what route to take whatever was best to get there faster because every driver wants to get there faster so that way they can at least like you know take some time to themselves you know, like go and sit down for a meal or, you know, maybe they can get an Uber or something to go watch a, a show. You know, just like some human interaction type of thing instead of being locked in the truck constantly. But now, I, I don't know, the trucking industry has gotten way horrible. And like I, I was communicating to my dispatcher, I was like, you know, this is too much. Like y'all are, because it takes time. Like we get 10 hour, like 
breast break, right? And I understand like other jobs and stuff like that. Like, I don't know how to make sense of it to get anybody to understand that drivers, truck drivers are being run into the ground and we are not robots. We are human beings that deserve dignity, time of day to at least sit down and have a meal, not to be overweight or anything, you know, at least give us time to walk around or relax or do something instead of constantly calling us like, hey, um, sorry, but you're going to have to get this load there. And there's no questions asked. Like, you have to get that load there. And if a driver says like, hey, I don't have the hours to get there legally, then they're like, well, figure it out. And you can't figure it out because what they're trying to tell you is you're going to have to purvey it to get the load there on time, um, legal as F. And that would reflect on the driver, and that's consequential to them to lose their life if DOT would stop them and inspect them and find out that they were a personal conveyance to get the load there on time. But companies don't care about drivers no more. All they care about is their loads, and um, it's sad. And I, I'm trying to figure out how to help drivers to get more, you know, I don't know, dignity or respect or something. Okay. So you said about two months ago. So how long you been driving for the company up until um, I got hired with the company August, I believe, uh, August 21st of last year, I was hired. Oh. But I was there for orientation, I believe, August 17th. Okay. Okay. So what? What's that? August? September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Oh, okay, so we're looking, what, about six months? Give or take seven? Wow. Okay. So, but, well, almost eight months. Yes, eight you're months? correct. So, almost eight months. So, but because I started telling them that I didn't want to personal convey no more, so my dispatcher, he wouldn't text me or nothing like normal whenever a load was going to be late. Like, you know, hey, we need to get there on time. He would call me and say, hey, we need this load there on time. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, you're going to have to send another driver to pick it up or something because I'm out of hours. Like, I don't, I don't, like, I will drive 600 plus, 7, depending on the terrain and stuff. Like, I'm not no, like, slacker driver. But they were taking too much advantage of me. And I was like, dude, like, no. Like, I did it one time for him because... I could probably, like, squeeze it through, you know, like, trying to find a safe haven, something. But that was only, like, 30 minutes. He wanted me to drive, like, an hour and a half. And I was like, no. Like, no. No. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. Like, I would pass up so many truck stops. Like, that's illegal as if. And I would have to stop at every single truck stop and say on my stuff, you know, it's full. Like, they don't understand that. And I'm, I don't know. So, so within that two-month period, which it started going downhill for you between you and the dispatcher was getting kind of was kind of getting oh 10 oh, okay oh yeah because i always say to people that if if you and your dispatcher fleet manager y'all oh, it have, was amazing at the beginning yeah but if y'all don't have as a, soon as i started talking back and saying no then it started getting rough oh okay so as I was saying, when, when the dispatcher and the driver, when they don't get along or anything like that, your time at the company becomes a little bit wanky, I guess. When you saw the tension between you and your dispatcher, was there any opportunity that you could just be put on oh, to ten. another oh, dispatcher? Ten. Oh, absolutely not. He, at this point in time, in this God's honest truth, because they just had a meeting with me the week before I got fired, and abandoned and stranded in Newberry, South Carolina, and I had no way to get home. Like, seriously, no way. I must stay on topic. They had told me that he was the only dispatcher and his wife is safety. So y'all take that into account because I was trying to keep my job and I even talked, I tried to talk to her and I was like, dude, y'all never sent nobody out to tickle this trailer. Not one person. I don't care what other drivers drove this trailer like it was. I'm not about to kill nobody. Okay, so we I guess we're about to get to the trailer part right now. I guess that was the was the gist of the situation which which had you guys to sever ties. So yeah. you mentioned you you mentioned that the dispatcher and the safety director are family. Married. Wow. Husband and wife. Ooh, that's kind of that's Yeah. That would be That's not cool. Well, I, I would imagine how would that be if 
you have a problem. So who do you speak to? I have a problem with my dispatcher. <laughs> oh, yeah. So who do I speak to? <laughs> um. Well, I'm his wife. Why do you have a problem with him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Would there oh, be Tim, any... It was horrible. Well, would there be an option of... Say like I tried the third option, but that oh uh, the third option is the other one who is in training for safety, and that is her cousin. Oh. <laughs> so my dispatcher, <laughs> wife, and then cousin, and I'm like, hey, please. Okay, so that was the third option. There, so there really yeah, wasn't no I even other tried. options. Like she even like she even tried to help me. She really did, but then she just like nope. And I'm just like. <laughs> That's so bad. No. Yeah. No option. Wow. Well. I okay. even tried to call um, the owner. Okay. Um, And it, I think that company is split off between two, the owner and his sister. And I went through the handbook and I tried to call both of them to explain what happened. And I left voicemails, messages, nobody would respond to me. I just kept doing the same thing. If you do not run that trailer, clean out the truck. All right. So let's talk about the trailer. So... Where is this trailer? Why didn't you drive it? What what was the matter with it? So I took my load to Samsung in Newberry, South Carolina, and I picked up a trailer of pallets that had no um, bill of lading or nothing like that, which kind of concerned me because, I mean, if you get stopped, you need to have, like, proof of what you're hauling, you know? But I never really thought about it until I was actually getting tired, and I was like, and I'm actually screwing me because I'm actually hauling something that could hurt somebody if anything was to happen, you know? So the company right there was shady to me, like, just thinking back on it. But I had picked up the trailer at Samsung, and it was pallets. So I strapped the pallets down and everything. I did, like, an X over the pallet because I've done, like, the straight across, and that does not work with pallets at all. And I'm only 5'3", so they stacked those about 7 feet high. And I was like, well... Whatever falls over in the trailer, that's cool. Just my perspective on it. So I picked it up. I pre-tripped it. Everything looked fine to me. I mean, I checked all the hoses. Everything looked fine. So I start, I start driving it. You know, everything looked fine, like driving it slow. But as soon as I got on the highway, I noticed and I started picking up speed that the trailer was pulling really far to the right. And I was like, okay, this is not okay. And, um... Like, I was looking at my trailer in my mirror, and I didn't notice, like, because I had just gone on the highway about, I don't know, I was starting to pick up speed, and about a mile down was these workers working on the side of the road, and I swung, like, pretty hard to the left because the trailer was off-tracking, like, really bad, and it was already hit the rumble strips and everything, and I was like, I even, like, did the cross and everything because I, I about peed my pants because I thought that trailer was going to hit them. And I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. And the next exit was like three miles down. I put my hazards on, everything. Because it was like, uh, I don't know how to say it. Like, if you see something going straight, like the truck and the trailer are supposed to be right behind each other. And the truck is going straight, but the trailer is like, it was being pulled to the right. Like, I don't know, at, a, at an angle. So it's a straight thing, but it's not going straight. You know, okay. so I pulled off. I sent pictures to the mechanic. I told my dispatcher, I was like, hey, this trailer is not okay. Um, I don't know what y'all want to do. Tell me to get a hold of the maintenance. I did. Maintenance told me to take it back about the last exit. There was a pilot, but they didn't have a mechanic shop. So they said they were going to send somebody out. And I was like, my hours were done anyway. So my dispatcher told me, he was like, well, go ahead and do a reset and let the shop get a hold of you and y'all like figure things out and I was like all right sounds good but that didn't happen what happened was the next morning I'm talking to the mechanic or from the company because that day they were talking about chaining up the axle and everything and I'm just like oh good god like okay just send somebody out like to you know get me to a shop to repair it that's what I was thinking but no that didn't happen they said that well, my dispatcher had told me that over a dozen uh, drivers have driven it with no complaint. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry about them being shitty-ass people, but I'm not a shitty-ass person. I do care about life. 
And I'm telling you, I'll send you all pictures that the trailer is not aligned with the truck. And I'm not going to drive her like that. Y'all need to send somebody out to fix it or send me somewhere to get it fixed or something. But I'm not going to drive it 615 miles to Ohio like it is. And that's when I got fired. Mm. They tell me to clean out my truck and with my two animals. I have a dog and a cat. They knew that and just left me there. Well, let's let's talk about that for a second. And I'm I'm listening. I I, I hear what's going on. And there's well, I, I I seen trucks out here too and trailers that be off tracking. Wouldn't it just been better for you to when you you knew that you wasn't going to get any assistance or anything like that? Wouldn't it just been better to I don't know. It don't sound like you was that far from the from the shipper and receiving where you picked up the trailer. Wouldn't it just been better for you to just say, okay, let me take the trailer back. And since I refuse to drive it, let me go ahead and and hook up to another trailer and I'll just bring the truck back. Because that thing about that. But whenever I talked to him, he said, no, that trailer is already loaded. That's the one that we need. Okay. What well, being the driver, you the the consensus is my me as a driver. My main thing is safety. Right, and you're you're safety you're of everything, and you're the captain of your ship. Oh, that's basically what us old school drivers would say. You're the captain of the ship, and if you feel uncomfortable, like I asked him, I said, "Do is there anywhere I can take this?" He said, "Nope, uh, they're already gone because I had picked it up." Um, Friday, he said, they're already done for the day. You need to bring that trailer. And I said, well, that's a negative ghost rider. Because this trailer ain't going to be moved by me. So I guess Not unless somebody comes in, gives me the okay that it's safe to drive. Because, I mean, there was toll roads and stuff, toll booths that have barely enough room to get through. Okay. So there's, so the tension drawing between you and your dispatcher all over this trailer that you felt uncomfortable yes. to drive, right? Yeah. All right. So I, mean, I I will drive it as long as I my ass is on the line. If somebody says like, "Hey, okay, it's safe to drive. Um, it's off track in about you know three four inches, probably five from what I saw," but you know they all come up with different things. So like, I was my truck was on the line of you know my driver's side. You know that where you're almost into the other lane. And I was in the right lane, and my trailer was still hitting that line on the right side, the solid line where the rumble strips are. Okay. And I was like, this is not safe for nothing. Okay. So, okay. So now taking it back to the shipper and receiver is out of the question. They didn't give me the option. You, you, you they said no. All right. So you feel uncomfortable to drive. So since you're not driving and they're not letting you take it back. I did send them pictures of all the mud and everything in the hubcaps and everything. All It was all over the trailer. So whoever had driven it last and dropped it off, they really didn't give nice. it up that trailer. Like, it was caked with mud and grass, and I sent them pictures of everything. Okay. Before so, I even left them stung. So now that both of y'all are here, one refusing to drive, one refusing to let you take it back, the one in the middle says, since you're not going to do either, we're going to have to let you go. When you they heard didn't give that, me much. I'll agree with that. When you heard that, they said that they was going to let you go. Well, they didn't before, give me trying well, to worry well, it the right well, way. Well, hold on. For, hold, their, for, their, hold, for their part. All right. Well, hold on. Okay. If, again, let me circle back around. If that was the case, then why not, up under your own validity, just take the trailer back and then just say, well, I know I'm going to get fired anyway, or I know it's coming. Why not just take the truck back to Ohio and call it a day there? And you, why why not just do it that way before I ask my other question? If I wanted willing to drive it as soon as I left, not even like a mile as after I got on the highway, if I don't feel comfortable driving it, then why am I going to drive it 615 miles if I'm already worried about hurting people? Well, no, I'm I'm saying why not just take the trailer back because you said you was at the pilot or something like that. So it sounds I like mean, it wasn't. I mean, I didn't know that they were going to fire me at the time, like oh. I said. Oh, okay. They okay. put me on a 34-hour reset. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. So I didn't know right then that they were going to fire me. They didn't tell me until the next morning. Okay. 
So I was still on the 34 hour reset when they were firing me. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I got you. Okay. So, okay. So now you are after your reset, you're still at a standstill with not yeah. driving the trailer and they at a standstill yeah. of you not bringing the trailer back. So now they, they just, they, they just say, Right there. How, how was it worth it? Like, your, if you are not, they said, if you are unwilling to drive the trailer because it is safe, we have had five other drivers that we have noted that have bring, brought and transported it back and forth. And I, they said, so if you are unwilling to drive that trailer here, we have no other option than to terminate you if you are unwilling to do your job. And I said, no, no. I said, the last person who drove this, because I'm pretty sure five other drivers did not notice all this mud and grass that I've seen pictures of. So it's not five other drivers. It's one driver who probably did something really stupid and I reported. But I am reporting it that it is not safe to drive. And I said, if y'all send somebody out or send me somewhere with an escort to get it fixed, I am more than willing to do my job. I said, but I'm not going to take nobody's life at risk because of anything that's going to be stupid. Like, no. All right. So since that's you... what they kept coming back with, that other drivers have driven it. And why the F do I care how many people have driven the trailer? It was the last driver who drove it. And that's why there's so much mud and grass on the landing gear, everything. Like, I swear to God, I wish that all of y'all could have seen this trailer. Like, it was everywhere and there's no way to get grass and dirt and your hubcaps like all the way around if you don't go through something all right so right then and there what what day was this what day was this when that when, was thursday whenever i picked that up. all right so thursday and i was 30, started by reset 34 friday yeah. saturday and this is Sunday. Yeah. Sunday is when I had to get a motel room and I stayed there for almost a week. Like I literally, my friend finally reached out and she was like, hey, in Virginia, Virginia Beach area, Virginia, near folk. She said, I have a friend that will go pick up you and your dog and bring you back here. So that way we can help you get home. And I said, thank you so much because. I thought that I was going to be homeless, and I, I was even, like, calling people, like, veterinarians to, like, take my animals, because I was starting to lose hope, you know? Like, I was starting to get really depressed, and I was like, this really sucks, because I'm already running out of money, spending everything that I had left that I should have spent on a, to rent a car, but I didn't have a credit card on me to rent a car, and I have an out-of-state license, so they wouldn't rent it to me without somebody being present with a credit card so none of my family or friends can help me because they're not in South Carolina. So let me see if I can get this straight. I was extremely messed up. Like, I could not get home. So let me see if I can understand this and, and see if I can get this straight. Like, you wasn't given the opportunity to, to at least drive the truck. Would you be accountable for abandonment or no because they told you to get out of the truck and clean it out where the truck was at anyway, right? Yeah, but no, that's not on me. That's on them. Okay. So they asked you to so they asked you to abandon the truck. They ordered me to oh, get out ordered, of the truck. Oh, they ordered you. Oh, okay. Then that's they a said, different get your stuff out of that truck by five PM. Oh. We have another driver going to pick it up. Oh, oh okay. All right. Screenshots of those messages. Okay. To yeah, I've got everybody that I know working on this so, to help me get a lawyer. So, wow. Mm. Oh, this is not going to happen. I will take this to the state, Senate, Congress. If God and anybody is on my side, I will send it for truck drivers. So this never happens to nobody else because I was, I was really starting to get depressed. And it's not okay what to do leave you, somebody what do you, miles away. What do you think? Because I, I, I talk to drivers that been in situations like this before. I, I got a, I got a truck driver buddy that, that I'm close to. He's a friend of the show. And he mentioned that the company is responsible to get the drivers not all home. of them, no. But, and it's not, but that's what it's I, not illegal for them to leave right, you. Right. That's what I thought. I, I thought the same. I thought that, yeah, it's not. If the company tells you to get it's out immoral, of their truck. but it's not illegal. Yeah. Well, if the company tells you to get out of their truck. They want you out of their truck. 
you're out of the truck. Because once they, once you're, once, I guess, if you're terminated or whatever the case, and you drive that truck anyway, then that'll be grand theft. On your ass. Right. Yeah. That, that'll be theft. Well, the cops come, they'll pull you over, right. and you'll get arrested because of you driving the truck illegal. Yeah. So, yeah. So, wow. That's, uh, that's why I didn't do it. I prayed a lot. And I reached out to everybody that I knew, but I needed a credit card. That's all I needed to get home. I had the money on me to get home to rent a car, but I didn't have a credit card on me. Well, here's the thing. You can even Google search like Enterprise. Like they will not rent you a car if you have an out-of-state license and you don't have a major credit card. Well, here's the thing with that. And I, I tell drivers this all the time. You you should always pack light and you know, don't. You always pack light whenever you start working, but well, it's nothing against. You don't know how much you accumulate. Yeah, that's that's true too. Oh, but still, you should pack light. Should have money on you just in case, and definitely have a credit card. Whether it's whether it's a three hundred, five hundred, one thousand dollar credit card. This is twenty twenty four, so you should be able to Bro, get a credit card. You tell me if you can rent a car. No, you have to you get can't. a credit card. Right. Yeah. But no, you can't. Anybody uh, yeah. can. Yeah. But as far as. But that's called a secured credit card. Yeah, yeah. But as far as renting the car, I was going to get to that. Yeah. You you definitely going to need a credit card because majority of these rental companies require it. Now, some rental companies will let you go with a debit card. I don't know. When I was in that situation now, in years ago. you're in the same state, yes. When I, if you're in the same state, then yes, they will allow you to use a debit or credit card that is linked into your bank account if you are in the same state. But if you are not, like I was in South Carolina and my home, my home state is Texas. So they were like, no, you need somebody from South Carolina with a credit card, a major credit card to help you to get back home. And I cried a lot and I didn't know nobody from South Carolina. Not even my friends or family could help me because nobody is in South Carolina. Well, like everybody was literally crying because they could not get me home. Well, let's just say hypothetically that you couldn't, well, you got home, but let's just say hypothetically that you couldn't get home. Could it could it been a a a situation that you could have asked and explain to them and say, hey, I I understand. I understand how this works. And and maybe Who you are could you just talking let me... about me talking to. No, I'm just saying hypothetically, you're talking. No, hypothetically, you... who are you asking me to speak to to ask that kind of question? Oh, OK, well, go back to go back to your safety director and say, hey, look. I'm in a bind. I understand. Can I just at, knew that at, at least get she the knew everything? So there was no way for you guys to come together to no no it, no. It, was, it was either no, get she out. straight up knew everything. It, okay, she knew that I didn't have a credit card. She abandoned me. They she and the company abandoned me in Newberry, South Carolina, knowing that I had no way to get home. They knew that I didn't have no family, no friends, no nothing. To get home. Man, and this, like I said, I hear stories like this all the time. And I'm I'm, I'm definitely sorry that that happened to you. It's No, it's, they knew what was going on and they just didn't care. I got you. So that's why I want to make sure that no other driver gets left like that. Because that's not cool. I mean, if you were left like that, how would you think? Now, let me ask you. If you were left with two animals that you deeply care about, you rescued them, you raised them, everything. They're like your children. And you're you're running out of money. You're reaching out to everybody you know to try to help you get home. But you're losing hope because nobody can help you no matter how much they want to. They cannot help you. It doesn't matter how much money they give you. You just cannot get home. So as a woman, I was like, I even had another truck driver from the same company. He was like, well, you know, you could try to hitchhike. But, you know, a driver is going to want booty, okay? In my, when me growing up, I didn't grow up good. I was raped and molested. I will never, and I gave my word to Jesus Christ and everything that said, never again will I let any man take advantage of me. I'm a grown-ass woman, but I was losing hope. Okay. And I would not, not let nothing like that happen to me again. So I thought about killing myself, you know, to save everybody all the trouble. Nobody could help me. 
Well, I I know you you ask me that question. I I haven't been like. Well, no, I I have been. I I've been in that situation. I've been in that situation. My situation was that I was to bring the trailer or truck and trailer back to the yard in Tunnel Hill, Georgia. And well, not the truck and trailer. I'm sorry, the bobtail back to Tunnel Hill, Georgia. I would never forget it. Told the story. Story. Well, bobtailing is different than. Well, no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm pulling a trailer. That- well, well, it was, oh, you, you asked me if I've been in that situation before. And, and yeah, I have. I bobtailed. They called me and told me to up under false pretenses to bring the truck in to get service. Now, this was during July 4th weekend. So I was on my way home. I was to get another trailer and go about 600 miles to Ohio. So... Instead, I get the call after I drop the trailer at Amazon, and they tell me to bring it to Tunnel Hill, Georgia, to get it fixed. But that wasn't Bob the Hill. case. So I get back to Tunnel Hill, Georgia, come in, and then right over to safety, yada, yada, yada. Long story short, they told me to get out of the truck. I had, like, a couple of hours or so, get out of the truck, clean it out, we'll give you $50 to get home. So... So yeah, I I I I exhausted everywhere. I I I called every rental company in Georgia. Couldn't get a rental car. Nothing. I had a debit card at the time. I had money at the time. Nothing. Nobody wouldn't take a debit card. Couldn't do it. And I was no. To, I, I was to the point of like, what the fuck, man? But luckily for me, my at the time I had my son's credit card. Me and my son got the same name, by the way. So it's interchangeable. <laughs> so my son, I called my son up. I said, hey. I don't think you edit that part. I said, hey, me. I said, hey, man, they let me go. I said, I don't know what to do. He was like, dad, you got my credit card? I said, yep. He said, listen, I got you. He covered about $500 yeah. because it was it was to the max. He put about 500 on there. And then I went over to... I think it was Family Avis. Is awesome. I think it was Avis or something like that. And and yeah, I, I rented a car one way. Back then, oh, back then getting one way rentals is is not a problem. Now, after COVID, yeah. it's a problem. But I, I got the rental, got home, and yeah, I, I was in situations like that. I I was kicked out of the truck, I was terminated, and I, I was to the point that I couldn't even get home. I only had fifty bucks that the company gave me to get home and that was it so yeah i've been there yeah that's messed up i've been there so my takeaway from all of that do anything to help people like i'm down my my takeaway from all of that is is i got i packed light because i had i had a whole house in that truck and i was with the company for a year and a half i accumulated a lot i lived in that truck and I had a lot. Like yeah, I said. You question. Yeah. Why did they make you get out of the truck? So what happened was I did a video on the, at the time, at the time is it's called a driver. You're not the one that had sex in a truck while you were driving, were no, you? No, I did okay. a video. No. I have an idea and I was like, oh, damn it. No. There, at the time they had what is called a driver tech. And it's just like the Sam Sarah tablet, the Qualcomm, the people net. But their version, yeah. the their version of it was was a driver tag. It was a piece of shit. I'm I'm just here to tell you. It it kept blank, wow. it kept I'm, blanking out. It kept it doing all kinds like a, of stuff. A dinosaur. So I did a video on it because I got pulled over or I got pulled into the to the Pennsylvania way station. And in that particular video, I explained the fact that a hey, my driver tag was broke. I couldn't give the I couldn't give the DOT officer the the information he needed. Yada yada yada. I, I did a whole video on it. Somehow the company got wind of it. They got wind of it. I would have done the same thing if they kept messing up. Yeah, they they got wind of it, and instead of just terminating me because they didn't like the way how I put the information of the driver tech out there. They said it was a one and done thing because I had my camera in my hand and it really wasn't. It was strapped to my wrist and that and that was it. And that's how I got up. Yeah, that's how I got one and done with the company. I I had 
I had accolades with the company. I had I was like the top 95% of the drivers that would get the loads on time. Yeah. Top 95% of the drivers that accepted the loads. Does that matter whenever they don't? When no, it did, them all? no, it didn't matter. Didn't matter. One and done. That was it. One and done. Didn't matter if I had okay. if I had accolades. Didn't matter that I was in the top of the safety chain. Didn't matter. One and done. Nope. Yep. They they felt that because as I explained to them, I say my cam I ain't had my camera in my hand. I had my camera on my wrist. And yeah, they they said wow, it was they don't care. Yeah, if it's bad for the company, it's yeah, bad for them. They didn't care. So yeah, I've been there. But my takeaway from all of that, again, I I started to pack light. I got money on me now for any situations. I got credit card galore. I, I got a number of credit cards that got money on, that got, that got emergency money and all like that so that I'm good. But the only problem is now for some drivers that's that's going to face situations is that some of these rental car companies, depending on who you're going to get the rental car from, you, you got to know that if they're going to have one way rentals or if they want you to return a rental back to the place where you got it from. And that's going to be a problem oh, yeah. for... No, I'm not stupid. Yeah, that's, like, any that, idiot can figure that out. Like, yeah. as soon as you start putting in the, the information in, it says a different place, different location. Click on that, and then type in where you're going to return it, then... Yeah. So it's it's like some of these places now, like I said, after COVID, is is a little bit more timid. Before COVID, it was not a problem. You can, you can go on the website, reserve a car, let them know that you're going to Timbuktu and you got the car, bam, bam, boom. But now after COVID, after COVID, it's, it's a problem. They, 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 they want you to bring the car right back to where you picked no, it up No, you don't have to. I just rented a car and I well, took it, it from Virginia on, Beach. Well, it depends on... To Amarillo. Yeah, it, it de but it depends on... Yeah, like I said, it, it depends on the... the drivers the, need to learn how to click that button and it'll get in different prices, which is more expensive if you're not returning it to the same place. Yeah, but it's all, it depends on the different places. That's all because like oh yeah, if you're you in a certain like, area, right? If you I don't in a know, there's area. like more. There's like different enterprise. Maybe you're you know walking or whatnot, or maybe you can meet somebody who can take you somewhere. I'm a very communicated person. Like I can meet anybody anywhere if I choose to. But like right then and there, in my time of need, I was just desperate. Like I was sad, and I was just sitting there on the step. And a gentleman, a black gentleman, like, he was like, you know, good morning. I said, good morning. And he said, you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm just like waiting for this Uber, trying to figure this out. Because the Uber would never freaking come. They just kept doing that thing, like, we're trying to find you a driver and whatever. He was like, well, where are you trying to go? And I said, Enterprise. Because I told him my, my predicament, everything, you know, trying to get back home. And they were told me that I needed a major credit card to get home. Otherwise, I would have never gone. But I met, I met him, a nice guy. And, you know, he tried to help me out, like, give me advice. But I found out in my predicament that I was fucked. Like, nobody could help me, no matter how much they wanted to. And I didn't need money. I didn't need to take money from my family or friends. Because I had the money. I just needed a credit card to get home. That was it. All right. Well, hey. Again, I'm I'm sorry for your situation. I'm I'm glad you got home safe. So I guess my question is now is like, what's your takeaway from all of this? You know, I'm gonna try to stand up for drivers, and I'm gonna do as much research as I can because I guess I ain't got nothing but time and opportunity. So I'm gonna go through the library now and start researching laws, and I'm gonna try to see the shit out of that damn company. All right, all right. Well. Hopefully, get some success out of that. And that means that other drivers get success. All right. Keep in touch with me. Let me know. Let me know the outcome. I took every single page of that handbook that they gave me. Yeah, that's another thing, too, about the handbook. Yeah, I left that damn thing empty. Yeah, yeah. That, that's another thing about the handbook. People or drivers. I left that thing empty. They do not I, read I took the every handbook. single page. They do not read the handbook. They, you need to read the handbook. I tell drivers all the time that they need to read the handbook. They definitely need to read the handbook, bro. Because mm -hmm. the, 
it, it, it could be fine. But my it situation could be fine was everywhere. No, 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 no. My situation was wrongful termination. They wrongfully terminated me and left me stranded. So they get what they get. I hope that they get the maximum. Hey, I I feel you. I I got you. <laughs> I appreciate the opportunity to sit down with you. So thank you very much for that. You're welcome. I mean, if you can help other drivers, then 